In this film, we have taken a quick look at many different challenges faced by Asia-Pacific countries trying to phase out ozone-damaging chemicals. These hurdles have to be cleared as the region moves towards 85% reduction in 2007 and full compliance by 2010. Each country's situation is unique, but countries can learn from each other's experiences. And it's not just a task for governments alone. I don't think um, something like this can be just done by settling it between governments or even transferring money between governments, because ultimately it is very decentralised, the way in which these changes have to be done. And if you don't really involve people, uh, it's extremely difficult. I think you really do need education to play a very major role. Compliance needs a good mix of policy, law, regulations, capacity building and awareness raising. Together, these make up the formula for timely, effective phase-out of ODS without compromising economic activity or market competitiveness. The multilateral fund and its implementing agencies have played a catalytic role in assisting countries to develop and implement national strategies and programmes. The fund has approved a number of projects to help Asia-Pacific countries to meet compliance targets. These are being implemented with the involvement of the World Bank, UNIDO, UNDP and donor countries like Sweden, Japan and Australia. The UNEP-CAP team is providing technical assistance to these countries through two regional networks of national ozone officers. Technical cooperation between developed and developing countries has been the bedrock of success for effective phase-out so far. Now, Asia-Pacific countries can also look up to the more experienced countries in their own region through the South-South Cooperation Initiatives of UNEP. Yeah, here, the regional cooperation, dialogue uh, with the governments, together with other governments, um, is important. I think as a region, when countries, big and small, big countries uh, like China, like India, sit together with small countries um, like Maldives or Nepal or Bhutan, um, th there is a sense of regional ownership. Um, small countries do not have the facilities, they are not producing, they are small consumers, uh, but countries like uh, China, uh, when they have announced that they will phase out by 2007, show a leadership role uh, to the whole region. The world is at a tipping point in eliminating ozone-depleting chemicals. The Montreal Protocol has been recognised as an international environmental agreement that is succeeding. But there is much to be done before we can rest assured of an ozone-safe world. For climbers on Mount Everest, the last hurdle is known as the Hillary Step. The final stages of any mission are always critical and need careful strategizing. Timely action by millions of Asians like these will be crucial in negotiating our own Hillary Step for an ozone safe world. And unlike on Everest, we need to climb this peak and stay there.